What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to continue working on our to-do list app with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to continue working on our to-do list app. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, we sort of set the groundwork for our to-do app. We did a lot of stuff. In this video, I want to work on crossing items off, uh, deleting crossed items, maybe uncrossing an item once it's been crossed off. And if we have any time, we'll start to work on this menu up here with the save open and clear list stuff. We probably won't get to the actual functionality, but we'll maybe at least build out the menu if we have time. So I'm in our to-do.py file. If you didn't see the last video, check the link in the comment section below for the playlist and check out that video. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. Okay, so let's start off by crossing off items. So I'm in my cross off item function that we created in the last video. Now, what we've got here is our list, and it's a list box, and each line of our list box is an item. Now, we can configure each line if we want uh, using a slightly tricky method. We're going to use something called item config. I don't know if we've really ever looked at that in this playlist before, but it will allow us to do exactly what it sounds like, config items in our list box. Now, the problem is it doesn't have complete control. So remember back here when we defined our font. We set the font family, the font size, and the font weight. We talked about fonts a few videos ago, and one of the things we can configure about a font is a strike through, right? It would be nice if we could update just to strike through, but we can't, unfortunately. What we can do is all of the stuff in my list here, right? So, you know, we've got the color. We can change the color. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to change a crossed off item to a light gray that so it looks like it's been crossed off, right? So that's what we're going to do. So let's head down here. And to do this, let's come into our cross off item. And we just call my list, which is the name of our list. And then we call dot item config. And this is a function. And we could put this all in one line or separate lines. I'll just do it in separate lines so it's easier to read. So what we want to do is grab the thing that's currently selected. So we clicked on an item and we want to cross it off. So that thing is the current selection. So we can call that by referencing my underscore list dot cur selection. And that's a function, right? So then what do we want to do to that? Well, we want to change the foreground color to something. Well, what do we want to change it to? I'm going to change it to D E D E D E. Right? There we go. And that's just a light gray color. And I just got that using a color wheel, go to Google type in color wheel, and you'll find a 1000 websites that allow you to find different color codes like this. So we've talked about this in lots of videos, check the playlist if you are not sure what that's all about. So okay, that should do it. Now let's go ahead and save this and run it. We're not quite done yet. But I want to at least see what we've got so far. So let's go python to do dot pi. And we've got our list. So let's cross off take a nap because of course I took a nap. So we click this. Now when we click away, we can see that the color has been changed to very, very light gray. And that's great. But you know, right when we do this, you can't really tell it's been clicked off because this big bar is still there. So let's get rid of that as well while we're at it. And we could do that. So let me comment this cross off item. And then down here, let's comment this get rid of selection bar thing. I don't know what it's called, but selection bar works. And to do that, we just call my underscore list dot selection underscore clear. And then we set a range. We want to clear the entire box. We don't want that bar anywhere. So from zero to end. So okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. Make sure that worked. And so let's take an app. Boom, and it works. So okay, very cool. Now if we want to do the same thing for uncrossing an item, we can do that. Let's head back over here and just right below in our uncross item, we're basically doing the exact same thing. So I'm going to just copy all of this and kind of paste it in here. But instead of changing it to the color of light gray, let's just come up here to our list where we first define the color and we want to just change it back to the regular color. So I'm just going to copy this 464646. And we can come down here to uncross item and instead of DEDEDE, -D -E -D -E, we want oops, all of this. There we go 464646. And again, we want to clear that bar. So okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it, make sure that worked. 
So take a nap, cross off the item. And oh, wait, we didn't actually take a nap, so cross it back, and boom, it's back again. So, okay, that's pretty cool, pretty easy. We can do multiple ones here. All right, okay, so we can cross off an item, but now if we've got a bunch of them crossed off, our list is getting a little cluttered, we might want a button to get rid of all the crossed off items. So let's go ahead and create that. We actually don't have that button yet. So let's go ahead and make it. So let's come down here to our buttons. I'm just gonna copy this guy here. And let's call this delete underscore crossed underscore button. And that's gonna be on button frame. And instead of saying uncross item, let's say delete crossed items or delete crossed. That works. And here, let's say delete underscore crossed. And we also need to then let's go delete. Well, just copy this whole thing, paste it in here, and this is delete underscore crossed underscore button. We want to put this in column four. We don't need any pad X because this pad X here is still applying, so we can get rid of that. Okay, so now we need to make this function really quickly. So, okay, here we go. We can just do it right here. Let's say define delete crossed and pass. And let me just run this to make sure that button looks okay. We're kind of running out of real estate here. So we might move some of these buttons up into the menu bar later on, to get rid of the clutter. But okay, for now this works. So, okay. So our delete crossed function. So this is a little tricky, right? Because we're not just crossing off an item, right? We've, we can already do that. We can already highlight something and delete it. What we want to do is delete all the items that have already been crossed off, meaning all of the items that have that light gray color to them. So how do we figure out which things have light gray colors? That's a little tricky. So to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a counter and I'm gonna set it equal to zero. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through every item in our list. And then we're gonna say, hey, if that item has a foreground color of this, delete it, otherwise don't. So we're start, we'll start our count at zero and we wanna loop while the count is less than the size of our of our items, right? So let's do that. Let's create a basic while loop. And we don't use while loops very often. I usually always use for loops, but for this, I think a while loop will work pretty good. So we want to say while our counter or count is less than my underscore list dot size. Now the size will return the number of items in our list, right? So in fact, if we want to just kind of copy this. And let's comment this stuff out real quick. And let's just print this and see what it's returning. So let's go ahead and save this and run it real quick here just to see. So we can see we've got one, two, three, four, five items in our thing. So if I click delete cross, we can see it's printing out five. So it knows there are five items. So that's really kind of cool. We can use that information now to loop through five times basically, right? So we're saying we'll start with zero. And while that is less than five in this case, we want to do something. Well, what do we want to do? Well, let's run an if statement. Because remember, as we're looping, each time we loop, we want to go down and check the line. And we want to say, hey, if that line is light gray, delete it, right? So to do that, we say we need an if statement, if the line is gray, right? So let's go if my underscore list dot item C get. Now we haven't really talked about item C get, but this will allow us to get the uh, some information about the item. So which item do we wanna get? We wanna get the count and what, what thing from the count do we wanna get? We wanna get the foreground color. So this count will be the item number. As, as we loop through this, it will increment our counter and it, that'll, every time we increment the counter, it'll go from one to two to three. That'll be item one, two, three in our list, right? So that count, we want to grab the foreground color and we want to say, hey, if that foreground color equals that color, let's see, where did it go? Our uncrossed, this color right here. This is the light gray of our crossed off items. If the foreground color equals uh, that light gray, then we want to do something. Well, what do we want to do? We want to delete that thing. So we can just call my underscore list dot delete and we want to delete, what do we want to delete? 
Well, we want to delete the item with the index number of whatever our counter is at the moment, right? So if we're on number one and number one has a light color, we want to delete number one, right? So to do that, we just call my underscore list dot index. We want to get the index number. And what index number do we want? We want count, right? Okay. So that should do that. Now we need to increment our counter. So count and we can just go plus equals one, right? So every time this does this, it either deletes a thing or if it doesn't equal this color, it won't do anything. And then it'll add one to the counter. So zero becomes one, becomes two, becomes three, becomes four, becomes five. Five is not less than this list size. So we may have to tinker with this. Let's play with this and see. So let's go ahead and run it. So, okay, so this is the third item and let's uh, cross it off. Now let's delete the cross, take a nap should delete. There should be four things left afterwards. So we click this, boom, take a walk is deleted and there are now four things after it. Now, the question is the last one. Let's see if we uncross this one or let's see if we cross off this one. So that's been crossed off. Let me just make sure, okay. Now we click delete and that works. We want to try the first one also. Let's cross off this item. Boom, that worked. Okay. And that seems to work. So, okay, that's pretty simple. And we are moving right along. Now, I said we might get to the file menu in this video, but it's getting a little bit long here. So, I think we'll just leave that to the next video. That should be easy, though. We'll just do open and close the file and save it. We'll use a pop up dialog box. So, that'll be kind of interesting, a little different than the DAT files we saved a couple of videos ago when we looked at dat files, uh, but uh, yeah, coming right along. And let's see, can we still delete an item? Boom, yep. Can we add more stuff? Can we add more stuff? Can we get rid of stuff? Oops, there we go, cross it off, and then delete all the cross, yep. And we're moving right along. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. It pays just $49 taxes, all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.